worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There was one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all, and is through all, and in all. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give me thanks to God the Father through him. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have committed to your church the task of making disciples of all nations. Thank you for enlightening those who teach with your wisdom and those who learn it. Enable the students to continue from this day on, uh, rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, that they may worship and serve you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll now sing Psalm 78. turn our attention now to the Word of God. Our readings today, as we look at them, will bring us to see just how important it is that God has given us His Word because they are life and they are the foundation of our lives. Our first lesson today comes from Deuteronomy chapter 32. Moses came with Joshua son of Nun and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. When Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I have solemnly declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Spirit, the Holy 
We now read our gospel from Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears the word of mine and does not put it into practice, is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We'll now listen to the class hymn, the hymn 439, Lord, Take My Hand and Lead Me. Peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Your time at St. Paul's is ending. You are about to begin a new transition, a huge transition from grade school to high school. When you came to St. Paul's this year, most of you probably came marching through those doors with very little apprehension or worry or fear. You knew what was going to happen. By the, the middle of the year, I'm sure you just walked into school half awake, knew exactly what the routine was going to be, and nothing quite startled you. You had great confidence and courage while here. And that's a great gift that was given to you by your parents and the teachers. But like I said, now you're transitioning out of here, and you're going to go to high school. You're going to sit in classrooms with strange faces. You're going to be taught by teachers that you barely know. You're going to be in hallways with a whole new experience in life. Are you ready? Is there a little fear? Then let's have those words that you guys chose and let's remember what they say to us. Be strong and courageous. But do this in the Lord. Hear now from Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, and I've added for you verse 8 as well. Because you only chose verse 9, I think verse 8 is important. So hear these words. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
It's a huge transition, isn't it? But I want you to know millions of people have done this before you. Millions of people have transitioned from grade school to high school, and they made it through. And Lord willing, you too will also make it through very well. But I want you to do this successfully. And the best possible way you can go through it is with the word and with your Lord. For Joshua, he was starting something new too. He was going to be the the new leader of Israel. Now, you have to understand, Joshua had been with Moses from the beginning. He was there when, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai. He had watched how God worked through Moses throughout his entire adult life. And so he was well-versed in what the day-to-day life was going to be like for the nation of Israel, at least as it was in the wilderness. But now they were going into the promised land. What was that all going to be like for him and for the nation? No doubt it was quite a, a daunting idea for him to be the leader of Israel. And so the Lord comes to him, as we have in our lesson, and he speaks to him. And he lets him know where his strength lies in the very word of God. He says to him again, Do not let this book of the law, that is God's word, depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. To you graduates, what God said to Joshua is truly important for you today too. Do not let the word of God out of your mouth. Now, This might seem like a daunting task. And it is a big task that God wants us to to undertake with our lives. But it's truly important. And it can be done. Maybe you're saying, really, Pastor? Well, here God says, day and night, may it be in your mouth. May it be a part of your life. May you be meditating on it. And you might still say, Pastor, I don't know if we can do this. Well, think about your first crush. When that happens... You won't be able to get that girl or that boy out of your mind. It's possible. Or ask your parents when they give you a phone. If, if a teenager ever puts down their phone, it seems like they're always on it, taking pictures and checking social media. There too. Great focus. It can be done. God is giving you the time and the talents to do just that. Now when you go to high school though, this too is a place where you're to meditate on God's word, to think about it day and night. And that's where it is truly difficult because of the world that you're moving into. But it's no different than Joshua. When Joshua was leading the nation of Israel into the promised land, he was going into a promised land that was filled with nations that were profane and vulgar to the Lord. He was going into a, a, an environment where there would be idol worship and false gods all over the place. He was going into an environment where people would do things that were appalling and breaking God's commands. And so God said to him, Do not let this word of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. I would like to think that no matter the high school you go to, it's going to be a very safe and warm and loving environment that you can thrive in. But the truth is, In high school, as children are starting to figure out who they are, they fall into sin. There will be profanity and vulgarity. At first, it might seem funny when you hear it, but then before you know it, it becomes a part of your your mouth and your speech. It becomes something that becomes so part of you that you would just say, that's just who I am now. I use these words. You're going to come in contact with teachings and the ways in which people live their lives. And they will pass it off and say, this is the way it is. You must accept it. Even though they are teachings and rules that violate what God in his word says. There will be sexual sins of all kinds that will be before you. They will be placed as normal before you. And how will we react? How will we withstand and not give in to these things? 
And the answer is always the very word of God. Graduates, do not think of yourself stronger than you are. Here, when when Joshua was being spoken to, this is now 40 years after he had originally went into that promised land. Remember, he was a spy. And he went in to go and to look at this promised land. But when he came back and gave the report, well, we know what happens then, right? The people rejected God's word and said, they're too strong and too big. We can't go in there. How would you and why would you bring us here, Lord, just to die? And the people, the people rejected God and his word. Joshua is one that would spend then 40 years of his life watching his generation die for their rejection of God and his word. He is one who would make that promise for his household, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. He had seen what rebellion to God results in death. Don't be foolish, graduates. Do not think you are strong and you, are, you know enough and you've had enough education in God's word. It's a sad result and a sad reality that after graduation, some of you will pull back from your connection to Christ. It will happen naturally because, first off, you're going to a school, most of you, where you won't hear Jesus in your everyday classes. And then... You have opportunity to worship, and already that can be tenuous at best for some of you. And before you know it, I will come calling and say, hey, why don't you be a part of senior youth? And hear God's word and study it with each other on Sunday mornings. And it will be one of those things where you say, I I don't know. I don't know if I will be awake. I'm pretty tired. We want to learn from Joshua and his life. We know what happens when we cut ourselves off from the word. There is no strength. We become weak and are able to give in to all sorts of sin. And it's a sad thing with Joshua and his generation. They followed the Lord, but the generation after forgot. And it doesn't take long for us to do the very same thing, to forget who our God is and what he has done for us. Graduates, do not be foolish, but instead be strong in the Lord. Our Lord promises that these words that were written will not perish, but will last and will equip us for every good work, but most importantly, will make us wise for salvation. Here it is. Be strong in the word of God. And when we're strong in the word of God, this also then can happen. Courage. Here, a verse again from Joshua chapter 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For us to be courageous, we need to know who goes with us. Who's here with us every moment. For Joshua, he had witnessed it firsthand. He had seen the glory of God. He was there on Mount Sinai, not all the way up, but there with with Moses. And he had seen the cloud and the fire and the thunder. He had heard God's voice. God was speaking to him here. Joshua would have seen the rock split open and water come gushing forth. He would have been there in the mornings for those 40 years and seen that, that wonderful Lord's provision of manna and in the evenings the quail would come in and he would partake for 40 years he had that he would see that pillar of smoke during the day with the lord leading the israelites across the wilderness he would see that pillar of fire at night and the glory of the lord coming and resting upon the tabernacle he knew the lord was with him And the Lord was going to go with him and his people into that promised land. You're making a transition, remember kids. A transition that millions have made before you. And let's do it well by reminding ourselves who goes with you. 
and it is our Lord Jesus. It's his promise, right? We learn that passage, I am with you always to the very end of the age. But before we were in this world, he went before us in this world for us. When he was in this world, what did he busy himself with as a young man? With the word of God. He would find that the word of God was so important that he would, he would forget about his parents for a moment and be in the temple when his parents were frantically searching for him just so that he could learn more of his father's will for him. And throughout his life, we knew and know that he went before us when temptation came upon him through Satan. Jesus remained in the word and built upon the word. And when Jesus was in this world and people were around him, he didn't try to blend in, but he shared with them the truth, calling people what they were when there was sin, but also building up those who were crushed by sin. And he always used the word. Graduates, are you getting what Jesus did for you and me? He went before us. He walked in this world. He experienced what peer pressure would be like. He experienced the temptations and the corruption and the sins of this world. He was here as our brother. Yet he went for us. He knows what it's like to fear authority and to feel the crushing weight of punishment. More than the punishment of man, but the punishment of the Father himself. Because he came to be before us. And to be the one who stands before the Father for us. You see, Jesus on that cross wasn't there just idly, but he was there because he knows how much we struggle He knows the temptations and he knows the sins that we will fall into in this new transition of life. So Jesus went before us. And he went before us so that he could could forgive us. He offered his life on the cross in exchange for ours. And when he rose three days later, that is the greatest gift that could be given to us because Jesus' death was then shown to be the victory that it is. He has granted us release from our sins. Graduates, this is who goes with you. Jesus, who endured this world, who was scorned by the Father, rejected by him, put to death, and then raised to life. This Jesus is now the one who goes with you. This is the greatest gift that St. Paul's teachers and your parents can give to you. The knowledge and the truth of Jesus. He is now at God's right hand this very day, watching and ruling this world for you. And he promises to go with you wherever you are. So you're going to make that transition that millions of people have made before you. But you get to make it in a much better way. With Christ, who is with you. The joy is now, be courageous. I think of David when I think of that. David and Goliath. He shows us what courage is. There Goliath is taunting the Israelites and he is the one that is blaspheming. He is the one who is making fun of God and belittling the very name of God. And what does David do? David says, I will fight Goliath. Some call it foolishness, but foolishness is like a teenager that has a dare and then goes and does it without thinking. David was courageous. He knew who he was protecting. He knew what was right. He knew who would go with him. He did not know the results, but he knew that no matter what, the Lord would be with him. And so he went to do what is right and to uphold what is right, even in the most unpredictable and frightening of situations. Be courageous, dear graduates. When you get into high school, 
There will be profanity and vulgarity all around you. The temptation is to give in right away, but be courageous. Remember what God has done, that Jesus has loved you, and that the mouth that God has given to you is to be for his praise, to give thanks, and to respect to respect our Lord with the words we have said. There'll be sexual sins all over and all around you that, that will be thrust upon you. So be courageous and remembering that you were not your own, but you were bought at a price. That Jesus has spilled his blood so that you could be purified and that your life might be the Lord's life forever. Be courageous. In the midst of all the false teachings that are out there with people that are trying to bring to your mind the idea that maybe Jesus isn't everything. Be courageous and remember the truth. It is this word that makes you wise for salvation. It is this word and this word alone that is the very power of God for salvation. Be courageous. Live your faith. Do what is right, even when it is difficult. For Joshua, he had the Father, or he, excuse me, he had God speaking to him this very day. And as God was speaking to him, God was not wasting his words. God was giving him what needed to be done. And so we're doing the very same thing to you. We don't want to waste our time and our words here with you. And so we want to share with you the very most important thing. You are making a transition that millions have, gone, have done before you. Yeah, true. But you get to make it in an extraordinary way. With the very truth of God in your heart and in your mind and on your lips. You get to go forward. And as you do, you get to go forward with Jesus with you. But I know as you go forward, you will fail. That's not easy to hear, but it's the reality. And the reality that has happened for the parents that are next to you, for your teachers that taught you, and for myself who went through that too, we have failed. But then here is the great truth. Our God in his word still remains for us this day. Jesus has still gone to that cross and forgiven us all our sins. When we do fail, like millions have done and perhaps trillions of people have done, of course, across this world and fallen into sin, they still have this wonderful good news. Jesus has forgiven them. You're going to make this transition. You have to make it. It's what is coming and is waiting for all of you. But go forward, strong and courageous. Because the Lord in his word goes with you. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Amen. Let us now pray. O Lord God, you daily commanded the Israelites to bring sacrifices before you. This day we offer to you our lives as sacrifices to the glory of your name. We bring to you our believing and penitent hearts. Heavenly Father, you created our bodies. Dearest Jesus, you redeemed us with your blood. No counselor, Holy Spirit, you set our hearts apart as the dwelling place of Christ. Thank you for this gracious gift. Lord, we pray for the souls of the graduates. If their hearts are unclean by sin and unfit for you, forgive them and wash them clean through the blood of Jesus. Govern their hearts this day and hereafter with your holy and right will. Preserve them from offering their bodies, minds, and hearts as instruments of sin. Keep them from shame and guilt, which can be used by the devil to drive a wedge between them and you. Lord, preserve this class just as they will promise in their confirmation vows. Allow your word to be the most precious treasure of their lives. 
Enable the graduates to see that in the darkest hours of their lives and during the highest heights that you, Lord, bless both times. Lord, give these graduates hearts of faith which see that you are with them now and always. Cause their lives to bring you glory through their life, death, and resurrection. To you be all praise and glory, O Lord. We now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, now listen to the faculty's song, Run With Resolve. We are now at that point in our service when we speak to our graduates and also hand out to their diplomas. To the class of 2020, our eighth grade students, I kind of want to go back to March 13th, don't you? It was the last day we had in school together, and we didn't know that that was going to be the case until later in the day. And even then, I think there was that feeling that, okay, we're going to be taking off of school for a week or two, but we'll be back, right? And then weeks kind of stretched into months, and little did we know that March 13th was our last day that we got to spend together. Had we known that, perhaps we would have been, you know, enjoying the moment a little more. We would have been smiling a little more, um, maybe being more patient with each other that day. Um, there's just so many times that I wish I could go back to that time. There's been also times that I've also prayed to God during this time where I say, God, please not this class. Not this year, not well, not any year, but especially not this year. Um, you guys have been so wonderful to, to teach, so wonderful to be around, and just kind of to be fellow Christians with me, to study God's Word together, and to grow in God's Word together, and just enjoy uh, being together. 
So it, 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 I took it especially hard in, the, in those first few days, especially and even kind of throughout just not being able to be with you guys in these last few months. But then God, I think, has taught us a lot during this time. And, and I think God led me to realize that even though we haven't been together in person, um, he has sustained each and every one of us through his word and through our presence together, either virtually. Um, and in many ways, we've kind of grown closer over these last few months, too. And I praise God for that. I also realize that this is going to be a monumental moment in our lives, and we're always going to be remembering that. And in that way, I'm always going to be remembering you guys as the class that was quarantined, or the class that we didn't finish in person. So you guys were, you know, in some ways, become more memorable in that way as well. I thought you guys chose so well for your passage, Joshua 1 verse 9, where God reminds Joshua as, as they move on from leadership from Moses to Joshua to be strong and courageous because the Lord is going to be with them wherever we go. And we saw that, didn't we? Whether we were in school or whether we were at home and in our separate you know, places learning on our own, the Lord was with us. We grew in faith during this time. We grew together. And guess what, 8th graders? As you guys move on to high school, the Lord is going to be with you too. And that's just the reassuring thing that he tells us in that passage you gave us. So thank you for picking that passage. What a wonderful passage to be hearing at this time um, in our lives, but especially at your time. And God is going to bless you richly throughout your high school experiences. He's given you so many gifts and talents. Most importantly, though, He's given you that faith to trust in him above all things. He's given you wonderful parents to support you in that journey and wonderful teachers too um, in the future and also hopefully teachers that continue to support you that you've had in the past too, including myself. Um, with that, we're excited to hand, hand you your diplomas. So we're going to try this virtual handing off thing and see how it all goes. So we're going to go alphabetically here. Our first diploma is going to be going to Jackson Anderson. Grace Antonson, Hannah Berg, Allie Denton, Hunter Grinwald, Noah Grinwald, Elijah Kelly. Landon Porvosnik. And lastly, Haley Wagner. At home, you can do this. Give them a round of applause. Congratulations, eighth grade students, freshmen in high school now. God's blessings in your future years at school. Please stay connected to Jesus. Stay in his word, and we'll be praying for you in the future years. Take care. Hi, I'm Mrs. Maddox, and I am the director of the preschool here at St. Paul's. Um, I've met most of you, I'm sure. Uh, during this whole distance learning, um, our preschoolers have also been engaging online uh, over distance. Um, we've been doing some uh, classroom activities in and, and one platform, and we've also been meeting a couple of times a week through Zoom. And at the end of the Zoom meetings, uh, I always have the kids choose um, a couple of uh, Bible truth songs to close our, our, our session out with. Um, somebody will always uh, choose, Jesus loves me, this I know. And sometimes they even, uh, they even choose it uh, consecutively. So we sing it a couple of times in a row. That's more than uh, a cute little uh, children's song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Um, it's a lovely song, but it's more than just cute. Um, it's, it drives at the heart of the whole message of the Bible. Um, God has told us uh, in the Bible what love is, but he's done more than just uh, told us with his word. He's also shown us with his son, Jesus loves me this i know and the kids love reminding themselves about that they love hearing that um, jesus loves me um, they know that they are important to their savior they know that they 
uh, can trust their Savior. They know their Savior loves them. And that's the message that your children heard at St. Paul's, whether they were with uh, teachers um, in the classroom or uh, over Seesaw um, on doing some activities, hearing a Bible lesson on Seesaw, whether they were with us on Zoom, that's the message. Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. Jesus rose for me. I am important to him. I'm important to my Savior. Um, that's the message that they heard at St. Paul's. That's the message they heard whether they were in preschool or eighth grade. So uh, we wish God's blessings on your um, family um, in the future. Um, may his peace, uh, God's peace rule in your hearts as you stay close to God's word and uh, remembering that Jesus loves you as well. God's blessings. I just wanted to say congratulations to our kindergarten class of 2020. It has been an amazing year. I am so proud of you for how much you've grown this year. You've grown in things that you learned in the classroom, like your letters and your numbers, but you also grew in a couple of other ways. You grew just personally. When you started kindergarten, there were a lot of things you didn't quite know how to do, like tying your shoes, heating up your own lunch, but now many of you know how to do those things. That's awesome, way to go. But the most important way I saw you grow this year and the one that makes me smile the most is how you grew in your faith. You learned about Jesus, your savior, through our Bible lessons, through our devotions, through chapel. And my favorite way that you learned about your savior was all the time we spent gathered around the piano singing. That was the highlight of my day every day. And to see you sharing your faith with your classmates and with me and with others in our school and church that way, 
That was amazing. I am so proud of you for how much you've learned this year. Now, this school year didn't quite end the way we wanted it to. Didn't go the way we wanted, the way we planned, but you have still grown so much and I couldn't be more proud of you for everything you've done. Thank you for being an awesome first class to have. I love each and every one of you. Have a blessed summer. now the blessing of our Lord. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn together. Go, my children, with my blessing.
You know, during this coronavirus, I have heard how the students and the teachers miss each other and interacting with each other, and how parents, students, teachers, and all the workers at St. Paul's have stepped it up. Thank you for that. You guys rock. There are others who I want to thank and miss. I'm sure the students and teachers also miss you too. Thank you to the lunch ladies for the cheer you bring every day in the lunchroom. Thank you to the ladies for running the library. I'm sure the kids miss library time and getting books. Thank you to the janitor for keeping our school clean and sharp during this time. Thank you to the accompanists for beautifying our choirs, sports helpers for making that success, parents in the classroom for helping out, and all who have helped this year at St. Paul's in many different ways. We look forward to seeing you all next year. Thank you for your servant's heart. We just wanted to take a moment at this time to say thank you to Ms. Henning. Um, she came here on a one-year assignment from Martin Luther College this past year and has just um, wowed us with, with everything that she's been able to do. Um, she taught in our fourth grade classroom this year in the seventh and eighth grade classroom in the afternoon. And one of the things that really jumped out at us is how willing she was able to work out of her comfort zone um, and fill many different positions for us and just to be really flexible and such a great team uh, player on our staff. Um, she's gonna be greatly missed for that reason and for all the other things that she did for us, especially lately in this distance learning that we've been doing. So thank you so much, Miss Henning. We, we are gonna miss you so much and we appreciate everything that you've done. I wanna thank you personally for coming here and giving us this first year of your teaching. We hope you do well in the future and uh, we have a little something here we want you to um, be able to wear into the future and remember uh, not only us here at St. Paul's but also the, the beautiful Black Hills. So uh, we have for you a nice Black Hills gold cross pendant. Um, may you wear this and think about us wherever your future takes you. And we have a few th uh, words from our students that they want to share as well. always really nice and always down to help us with whatever homework we needed help with. And I say God's blessings on your way. Thank you for being our teacher this year, Miss Henning. It was a really fun experience and we'll miss you. Okay, so Miss Henning, I wanted to say thank you for teaching me this year. And it was fun to try all those PE games that we played. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks for teaching me this year. Miss Henning, for all the times you helped me with history and for the one time that you helped me with math when I needed it, and just for being a well good teacher. Thank you, Miss Henning, for being our teacher this year. Thank you for putting up with us and being patient with us. Thank you, Miss Henning, for being an awesome teacher. I'll miss you. You always have the best books for you to learn. Thanks, Miss Honey. You've been an awesome teacher, and I feel fun skiing in Washington. Thank you for all of your work that you did this year. Thank you for coaching volleyball for me. You really helped me grow a lot in that. And also, thank you for trying to make PE fun, even though we're really terrible at PE, and we always are. Thank you. I appreciate you being our teacher this year, Miss Henning. You made all class, you made all our, your classes very fun. You always had a way of making them enjoyable. Even PE class, I always enjoyed PE classes and art classes too. So thank you. At this time, we would like to recognize the students who achieved perfect attendance this year. And I know what you're thinking, how did you calculate that? Well, we had these students that had perfect attendance through the first three quarters of our school year, and then they just did a stellar job staying in, in touch with us and working very hard during the distance learning program time. So we figured let's recognize these students for perfect attendance for the year like we normally would. 
Um, so starting, we'll go grade by grade. So in kindergarten, we had Phoenix Wentz with perfect attendance this year. In first grade, Addison Convalin. In third grade, Hannah Jensen. In fourth grade, Darby Shamling. In fifth grade, we had two actually. We had Chloe Berg and Connor Convalin. In seventh grade, we had three. We had Wesley Delaney, Anthony Noblock, and Devin Woodward. And then eighth graders, we had three with perfect attendance. Grace Antonson, Eli Kelly, and Hunter Grinwald. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for all of your hard work throughout the whole school year. I just have one big announcement before we get to the graduate slideshow at the end of this uh, evening here. And I am looking forward to that graduate slideshow, by the way. Um, first of all, we have that parade tomorrow. So we're very excited for it. Um, I just wanted to go through a few procedures again. So the parade is starting at 4.15. I know originally we said 4 o'clock. We decided to bump it back a little bit and, and shorten the period a little bit. You can participate anytime between 4.15 and 5 o'clock. Just come driving up to our school property. Um, you're going to be driving um, in that uh, circle, as you can see over here on the map. Um, just follow the directions of the people that are guiding you with the traffic. We'll also have some signs up there. Just a reminder that you can uh, grab a dilly bar if you are a student or a sibling of a student. Um, you can also bring a super soaker or silly string to go get your teachers in that teacher's row section. And then use this as your opportunity to drop off your Chromebooks, your iPads that you borrowed from the school, um, textbooks, library books is a big one. Remember those, just gather all of your uh, belongings that you used for distance learning that you borrowed from the school. That is a chance to bring those back. We will have bins laid out along the preschool, or not, not the preschool, along the playground and the, uh, the area around the playground. That'll be a large area for us to drop things off into bins, um, if the weather permits, of course. If the weather does not permit, we will probably find alternate ways, probably in the school commons, to uh, bring some things in. Um, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Our graduates are looking forward to seeing you. They're going to be spaced off all around the uh, property. So celebrate them. Bring, make some signs, honk some horns, cheer them a little bit. Um, it should be a great opportunity to celebrate them. So speaking of graduates, let's look at some of these uh, pictures here. We have a slideshow that we put together for a few minutes here. Um, you'll recognize some of their baby pictures probably. Um, it's just a good experience to see um, them growing up as they enter this new phase of their lives. So congratulations one more time, eighth grade, and we'll play the slideshow. After that, we will conclude the service.